watercolor and that's this bit over here. So how do I do this? I need a little spray bottle. You can take anything that, uh, that you've used up for example or you can buy a smaller one. You can get them pretty much everywhere um, and it, uh, it's a good idea to, to try around with several. Um, this is one I used to use but for some reason the um, the nozzle here somehow has changed. Sometimes they do that and this one sprays much more evenly. So what I do to get this cloudy, dusty effect, anything that um, that suggests movement or some natural structures in your painting without spending too much time on it uh, actually, um, is to just spray the area that you want to uh, to work on. You can actually see that I've done, whoops, I'm sorry. You can see that I've done a bit of that over here as well. And so what I do now is to put some paint of the color I want to use on my brush. That's a bit too blue, I think. So let's have some more burnt sienna in there to get it more brown in the end. So um, I'm not sure if, uh, if the camera can catch it. I will just wriggle it around a bit so you can see how the water glistens on the areas that I've sprayed. And if I just put some on here now. You can see that it just goes running wherever it wants to. It's a bit too dry actually, so I will just spray a bit more. And obviously that did the trick and the paint will just generally stay where you want it, but on the way we'll do all sorts of little things. Sound like Bob Ross here now. And then you can just use your brush to help it along if you have something specific in mind you want to do. If you catch it running into areas you do not, do not want it to run into, you can take a little tissue or what do you call these things in English? I don't know. So you just dab off the paint wherever you do not want it to go. now and then I will run into vocabulary problems like oh <laughs> so and let's just have a bit more here and I can see that I'm running into a dry area again so spray This is great for just adding some extra texture to backgrounds, for example, that you do not want to uh, to paint to exactly, or I, I wasn't I wasn't going to to add a lot of fighters here in the background, for example. I was just hoping that um, anything I did would just suggest movement, dust. And these things. I'm going to mix a bit more blue after all to echo the other blue bit that I have here and just drop it in there. The nice thing about this, about this is that you can do it at any stage in your painting. I did some of this, these textures uh, right from the very beginning and then after painting some more of the figures, for example, I found out that uh, this or that area could use some more of this or that. And then you can always go in again, re-wet what you've painted and see where that takes you. This is going to dry to a slightly lighter tone that I have here right now. So it's always a bit of a surprise to see where you end up. 
but as long as you know that watercolour paint dries to a lighter shade than when it's wet, that's a great start for you. When you first try this, it's a good idea to, um, to see what exactly the, this technique is going to do on the piece of paper that you work on. Different papers react very differently to being sprayed with water, most of all. So this paper, for example, is Bockingford Cold Pressed. It's a moderately, moderately rough paper that I love working with because it really has the best of several worlds. So as you can see, I've sprayed this area, but still the detailing here in the hand, for example, did not disappear at all. So unless I go over this now with a brush, which I'm not going to do, all the detailing you have done here will stay in place, even if you spray it with water. And some papers will not let you do that. So it's a very good idea to check out what your paper is going to do and how your paper is going to react when you do different things to it. That goes for any kind of technique and any kind of watercolour paper. This paper, for example, lets you correct things very well. I had a, a bit of a um, of a water edge here, and if you just re-wet it, go over it, then you can rid of get rid of most effects and unwanted things that you didn't like. I've decided to go a bit more reddish here, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm not sure if you can see the cat hair. If you have cats and you paint, this is something that's going to happen to you. Another tip for that. If it happens, I've got two here right there actually. There's one here and there's one there. Both look as if they are from my very, very cuddly cat Isis. I think, yeah, I think it's her. Um, if you find that you're painting cat hair in what you're trying to do. The best thing is just to leave it there. And once it's dry, you can just br brush it off. It's probably not going to leave any marks in your painting, unless it's a very coarse one. In that case, it might just attract some pigment to pool around it, but that has never happened to uh, my cat's hairs. <laughs> so. Um, I'm just going to let this dry and then I'm going to keep working on the figures there. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope it's been helpful and see you next time. Bye.